Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Pathfinder Solution Series in the topic of gravitation. So this is the section check your understanding uh, problem number five and six both are similar actually we can have more than one type of a solution. So what I would like to do in this particular video is to give uh, one type of solution for problem number five and one type of solution for problem number six. Actually, you can exchange the uh, way you solve the two problems. So that would be kind of a, a practice for you people. So without much further ado, let me present to you the formal wording of the two problems, okay? This is the fifth problem. Uh, a uniform cloud of dust particles approaches a planet from a great distance with a velocity V0 relative to the planet. The radius of the planet is capital R and escape velocity from the surface of the planet is V subscript E. The length of the cloud along its direction of motion is L, as you could see in the picture. Cross-section of the cloud perpendicular to its direction of motion is very large and its density is rho. How much mass of the dust particles will the planet collect during its passage through the cloud? Mass of the cloud is negligible as compared to the mass of the planet. Okay, so this is the first one. And the second question is about um, okay, we'll read this question. So if you want to give a try for e either of these questions and just pause the video at uh, the required place and try it out for 10 to 15 minutes, both the problems and try to see if possible, the similarity between the two problems and how to um, ace the two. Okay, so in case you can't, please do come back. And even if you can, right, I would request you to come back and look at the uh, nice little solution that I'm going to provide to you and a great insight into the topic, okay? So we'll start with the solution for question number five and then I'll come back and read six for you, okay? Right, so this is the question number five about the cloud actually moving a lot of things are there on the board, just follow my lead, okay? So just uh, look at the way I'm pointing and uh, just listen to what I'm trying to say, it will all be fine, okay? So. The cloud is actually moving towards left. So what we'll try to do is uh, we will try to calculate everything with respect to the planet. Okay, so if these cloud particles, which are at very far away distance are moving with V naught as per the question. Now I'll try to look at one of the dust particles in the cloud at a certain distance RC, I'll call it as some critical distance. I'll let tell you what this critical distance means to me. This particular distant point, if it were to actually come very close under the gravitational attraction of the planet, I'm imagining that RC is good enough to make this particle graze the surface of planet. And while doing so, it will actually undergo a hyperbolic path. Why hyperbolic? Because at a far away distance, the cloud particles already have a velocity. Therefore, the mechanical energy of those cloud particles with respect to planet is a positive number. Whenever mechanical energy is a positive number, you can prove right uh, that the uh, trajectory is a hyperbolic path. In this particular problem, we don't even need the shape of the path. Okay, so if at a grazing position, its velocity would be V. I'll derive this later. Okay, so we'll come back to this. Assume that it's some velocity V. So um, RC is the cri critical distance of the particle from the line of symmetry. This is the line of symmetry, which grazes the planet's surface. Okay, all particles thus less than RC will stick to the planet. So my argument is if this particle grazes, everything within lesser distances from this particular uh, point, because they are at a greater potential energy, definitely will hit this particular planet and the planet collects those dust particles. So if I can get this RC and look at the clouds diagram separately, all the particles which are actually in the cylindrical volume of radius RC is the uh, mass of the particles that are required for this particular problem. So my job boils down to just calculating the RC. So in order to do that, for this particle in its journey across the planet like this, I would use conservation of energy and conservation of angular momentum, two basic principles. Conservation of energy for this particle from here to here yields half mv naught square plus zero because it's at a far away distance, potential energy would be zero. And uh, that kinetic energy I have taken up should be equal to when it is here, it would have a, a kinetic energy of half mv square and potential energy of minus gmm by capital R where capital R is the radius of the planet because it is at the surface. So 
you can write this GMM by capital R as half M V square because in the question he has given the escape speed. Remember escape speed should be square root of 2G capital M by R. So I have rearranged those terms in order to write it in terms of V. This is actually a very interesting relation. Everything is in kinetic energy form and you would be able to write the value of velocity as this number. Uh, this is a very interesting result that if the velocity at very far away position is V naught, by the time it reaches the position, the velocity adds up as a V square under the square root. Okay, so this we could directly write it if you establish the relation between the two. So because I had to... Um, emphasize that to you i had written these three steps but students who are smart enough would be writing this one very quickly it makes sense also then upon using the conservation of angular momentum which is nothing but mvr right and m gets cancelled on both sides for the dust particle the v into capital r at this particular place should be v naught into rc both are uh, at 90 degrees to each other right so that I'll substitute the value of V I got from conservation of energy here, and then I'll be able to get the RC square, which is the critical distance. As expected, the mass of the particles that get stuck within this particular cylinder would be density into volume of the cylinder, which is pi RC square into L, where I'll substitute the value of RC square in this manner to get the answer given in the textbook. Okay, right? So this is what the solution is all about. In this, we have used pure physics equations and we didn't even use the fact that this is actually a hyperbolic curve, okay, right? Which is what we'll do in the next problem, okay? So are you ready for the next one? Let's go. Two spacecrafts of mass M1 and M2 are flying with their engines off in the gravitational field of a star of mass capital M that is much larger than the masses of the space spacecraft. Speeds of the spacecraft at great distances from the star are equal to V1 and V2 respectively. After passage around the star, when the spacecraft are again at great distances from the star, the spacecraft moves with the same speeds V1 and V2 as before, but perpendicular to their initial directions of motion. If during the passage around the star, the minimum distance of the first spacecraft from the star is R1, then what is the minimum distance of the spacecraft or the second one from the star in terms of this particular quantities that he has mentioned in the question? Okay, right. So just give it a try. Maybe this one you can ace it through. Otherwise, I'll be there to help you. So I'm going ahead with the solution. So what I can do is I can do the same thing that I did for the fifth problem, use conservation of mechanical energy and conservation of angular momentum. But I'll try to give a mathematical solution for this so that you will have both the tools after two problems. And at once the video is ended, you can actually mix the two solutions. You can solve the previous one using the math solution and this one using the physics part. Okay, right. As I already told you, since the uh, shuttle, space shuttle or rocket, whatever you want to call it, is coming from a very far away distance with some velocity, mechanical energy of this system is positive. Whenever mechanical energy is positive, the path or the trajectory is a hyperbolic path. Okay, so in order to know a certain math of this hyperbolic path, can you see this is the rocket which is going around this particular planet and at a very far away distance here and here the speeds are let's say V1. We'll first solve everything for the first rocket or first shuttle and then arrive at the second shuttle's requirements. Okay. If this is V1 and this is V1, is also saying the angle between these two at far away distance is 90 degrees as per the problem. Okay, so this trajectory, I would take it as the trajectory. Can you see on the right side of your screen, there is a trajectory that you are looking at, which is the hyperbolic path. So just to uh, freshen you up uh, regarding the hyperbolic equation in Cartesian system, this is x, y axis. Then the standard equation of the hyperbolic curve would be x square by a square minus y square by b square is equal to one, where a is the vertex point or a comma zero, I should call it. Okay. And b is the uh, other important point there. Okay. Now this asymptotes, which are nothing but the tangents drawn to the path at great distances at infinity. This infinitely large distance is what I'm depicting here. Can you see these blue dotted lines are these asymptotes? Okay, right. You could clearly see in this particular picture that the asymptote straight lines have a equation of y is equal to mx where m is plus or minus b by a. Very simple for any math student to 
clearly realize. And eccentricity of this hyperbola is square root of 1 plus b square by a square. So you clearly realize that the angle that you have in this physics problem, tan theta of it, is the tan theta of this particular line, which is nothing but the slope. So I can check all these three match with everyone and then you'll get the b by a. We can convert it to sine theta for our uh, comfort and then sine theta makes this fraction into this one and therefore you get it as 1 by e which is a very important result that the angle made by the asymptote of this particular hyperbola is written in terms of sine theta as 1 by eccentricity. Remember eccentricity of a hyperbola is greater than 1. In this problem, since he said this whole thing is 90 degrees, by symmetry you can say this half angle is 45 degrees. So you have been given indirectly a square root of 2 eccentricity for both the sh space shuttles. Remember, all of this doesn't depend on the velocities. You can have bigger velocities, but the eccentricity of both the curves of the both the space shuttles is the same, is what we arrive at. Very interesting result. Okay, so... Now, one more important thing, uh, the planet's center would be at the focus in this particular situation. So where is the focus? If I transfer this diagram into this, the focus is somewhere here at a distance of AE from the origin. Remember, the, uh, this vertex point is at distance A and the focus is at a point AE. Therefore, what is the shortest distance that you end up having? AE minus A, right? AE minus A. So that's what I have marked it here. You could see the vertex point I have marked it at A and the total distance is AE from the focus. Therefore, whatever shortest distance I require in this problem is AE minus A. Okay, not only that, the far away distance line, that asymptote that I have drawn, if I want the perpendicular drawn from the focus onto that blue line, right, it forms a small triangle. Can you see? If I draw a perpendicular from the center of the earth to this blue asymptote, it forms a right angle triangle. I have replicated that triangle here. Since this distance is AE as you could see, and this is theta, and we already know that sine theta is one by E, you should have this perpendicular distance that you have drawn as A. Very, very interesting result, right? The distance of the perpendicular from the center of the earth to the asymptote is A, which is same as this distance. That's an interesting result we get, okay? So using this, now I'll use conservation of angular momentum and conservation of mechanical energy. So angular momentum conservation, which I'll use from the far away distance point and also the closest distance point. So assume in the first space shuttle's case, the closest distance velocity is V. That means when it is here, very close, right? So um, angular momentum would be MVR, right? MVR for the far point would be MV into perpendicular distance, which I already designated as A, therefore V1A. And when it is at the closer distance point, it would be M into this distance, right? What I said as A into E minus one into V. So A gets cancelled and E is root 2, therefore you'll get V1 is equal to root 2 minus 1 into V. Very important result. Okay, keep it aside. Also use mechanical energy conservation for those two points, right? For a far away distance point, the kinetic energy only will be there. That would be half mv1 square. And for the closest distance point, it will be both kinetic energy and potential energy where R1 in the question has been mentioned as the closest distance. This closest distance itself is A into one minus, E minus one, okay, right? Then comes the magic part, okay? So whatever V1 has been given, R1 has been given, V is not given, I'll um, substitute for V in terms of V1 here. So it will be a simple factor, right? For V, it is root two plus one into V1, which comes here. Then you take it on that side and it will be a common factor of V1 square. So what is more important for me is that I realize that subtraction of these two terms produce a V1 square proportional to one by R1. Can you see that? All the rest of the constants would be the same for the second space shuttle also. So I realize that the far away distance velocity square is proportional to one by the closest distance of approach. So similarly, I could have repeated this entire effort for the second space shuttle and write V2 square is proportional to one by R2. So dividing these two, you end up getting the value of R2, that is the second space shuttle's closest distance in this format, which is given in the question. Okay, right? So I hope you enjoyed the way we use the hyperbolic orbits to actually arrive at this particular solution. So which is a very important tool, especially for uh, JE Advanced and Olympiads that you need to know 
uh, how to interpret the geometry of hyperbola uh, and use it for gravitational slingshot. This type of uh, gravity assist is called as a gravitational slingshot where you want to make a turn in space without using any uh, fuel then they take the assist of a gravitational field and make it turn it's like elastic collision with a wall just that in this case there is no contact force okay so i hope you enjoyed this and try to uh, use this equation for rest of the problems uh, in in uh, um, pathfinder or some other sources where you can find it uh, it would speed up your process okay so um, in case you want to check out the rest of the Pathfinder solution series that I have done till now, the link of the uh, playlist is in the description below. You can try that one out or you want to try rest of the series like Olympiad workout series where uh, there are many problems that have been already done and I'll come up with more which cater to the needs of the student for the upcoming physics Olympiads both nationally and globally. AIT Select series caters to the needs of the students who are preparing for JE advanced and who wants to get well versed with tough problems and which provide the insights into the subjects resolve series solve tough doubts for the students which are not generally done in textbooks um, uh, and uh, it's a very good series that you need to check down all the links of the playlist are in the description below okay so in case you like the video please do like it YouTube al algorithm will um, press the video to more and more people and it would help me uh, grow the channel okay so thank you and please do make sure that you come back to visit my the next next video thank you very much stay safe take care